everybody, and thank you for tuning in to our Yamaha Guitar Development Open House. How about that walkthrough of the Yamaha Custom Shop? That was really cool. I think I'm going to have to hit up Pat and Raphael to make me a custom Marty McFly style guitar. So, my name is Doc Brown. I'm a product specialist with Line 6. And for the next 45 minutes, I'm going to be taking you through the newest part of our Tone Made Easy series of presentations. This one we're calling Tone on the Go. So if you've ever checked out one of these events, whether it be in store, or maybe you've caught one of our live streams on our Facebook page, our Line 6 live lessons, you know that we're going to be breaking down the elements of guitar tone, we're going to be talking about the different components that make up tone, we're going to be looking at artist rig diagrams, talking about the gear they use to make these iconic sounds, and how you can use a Line 6 piece of gear to do it on your own. So there's plenty to talk about today. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. So let's start with the elements of guitar tone. This will give us a chance to break down the various components and also give us an overview of some of the stuff we're going to talk about today. So of course it starts with the guitar, its construction, its components like woods and pickups all play a role in shaping your tone. In this particular event, we are really going to focus on pickups, specifically single coil and humbucker style pickups. After that, we get out to our effects pedals. They, of course, shape your tone, providing different types of sounds. How you set them up, how they interact with the rest of your signal chain, of course, will influence your tone. In this particular presentation, we're really just going to dive into a few different effect pedals. We're not going to go too deep. After that, we get out to our amplifiers. Of course, there's all different kinds of amplifiers, each with their own unique tones and sounds. And of course, your cabinets and speakers also play a big role in shaping your tone. In this particular presentation, we're just going to touch on a few amplifiers. And then finally, microphones will play a role in shaping your tone, whether you're performing or recording. So like I said, we're really going to be focusing on pickups for this presentation, but we do do events where we do deeper dives into effects, what types of effects there are, how you might set them up in a signal chain. We do deep dives into amps, cabs, speakers, and even microphones. So if you're interested in those, you could head to line6.com forward slash events or check out our Facebook page to see when those events might be happening. So let's go over the topics we're going to cover today. As I said, we're going to be talking a lot about pickups. We're going to be talking about pickups, their placement, how that affects your tone. We're going to talk about single coil pickups, an explanation of what they are, some of those in-between position sounds you can get and how artists have used them. We're going to talk about humbucker style pickups, once again, explanations and applications. And finally, to make all these different tonal examples happen today, we are going to be using modeling. So at the end of this presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about amp and effect modeling, what it is, and some different options that Line 6 offers when it comes to modeling. So the gear I'm using today, I have my trusty Yamaha Pacifica 112 VM. That's this guitar right here in this beautiful ice blue finish. It has this maple neck that I've really become fond of. And since we're talking about pickups, let me just tell you a little bit about this guitar. I have a single coil on my neck, single coil in the middle position here, and in the bridge you'll notice I have a humbucker pickup. I can actually split this humbucker using this push-pull pot in my tone knob, so that's how we're going to achieve some of these single coil bridge sounds we'll hear today. Then for all my amp and effect modeling, I'm using the Line 6 Pod Go, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about in depth at the end of this presentation, so stay tuned. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Let's take a trip back in time. Talk about how we got to the point of electric guitar. So before we had electric instruments, we had the acoustic guitar. It really came to popularity in the United States in the late 1800s. At that time, we just had our gut string style instruments, typically, you know, the classical or flamenco style guitar. And then at the turn of the century, around 1900, we get the invention of the steel string and of course the steel string acoustic. Now these have a really rich resonant tone great for playing solo, maybe playing along with another guitarist or backing a singer, but as soon as you add accompanying instruments, whether of the day or even modern times, that guitar of course is going to be drowned out. So the solution then was to amplify it by adding a pickup to the guitar. So we first see this on the hollow body and arch top style guitars as pictured on the left there, usually with a single pickup in the neck. However, there are variations to that, and then later on we get the solid body style guitars, usually with two or three pickups, but of course there are variations to that as well. So what is a guitar pickup? A guitar pickup is a magnetic pull piece wrapped in copper wire. That creates a coil with a magnetic field. As the metal string vibrates, it interrupts that magnetic field, and that creates an electrical current, which gets carried out of the coil in the instrument, and then reproduced as sound from your amplifier. The magnet type and number of winds of the coil will also affect your overall sound. So different types of pickups are going to give you different tonal variations. And we're going to hear that today in some of our examples. 
Pickup positioning also plays a role in shaping your tone. As that pickup moves further towards the bridge, you're gonna get brighter in sound. So up near the neck tends to be a bit darker, a bit mellower in tone. As you head towards the bridge, we're definitely gonna get more, more brightness in our sound. So I'm just gonna demo that really quick. I'm just gonna play a big open E chord on my neck pickup. Then I'm gonna head to the bridge and do the same, just so we could hear that tonal shift that happens between the placement of the pickup alone. Alrighty. Pretty standard stuff there. Hopefully you can hear that obvious shift as we move towards that bridge pickup. We're getting brighter in tone. We're going to hear how different players now use these sounds throughout the years. And we're going to start by talking about our single coil pickup designs. These pickups first came into popularity on the solid body guitars, first found on Fender instruments in the 1950s. So these guitars and their pickups, they helped define some of the musical styles of the day, including the Bakersfield sound in country music and of course, surf rock music. So these pickups have a really bright tone to them. They do have some inherent hum though to them and they can get a bit noisy when used with higher gain tones or perhaps have fluorescent lighting or maybe some faulty wiring nearby, they can possibly pick that up. But really great sound. Let's check out now how some artists have used these over the years. As I said, these guitars and their pickups, super iconic to surf rock. So who better to start with than the king of surf rock, Mr. Dick Dale. And we're gonna take a look at the guitar tone he got on the song Miserlou. So he's using a Fender Strat in the bridge position and he's plugging in to an early 1960s Fender Dual Showman amp. This is a clean style Fender amp, but it has two 15 inch speakers in it. So those bigger speakers and bigger cab are gonna mean an added bass response. Now in the early days of electric guitar, it wasn't common to have reverb built into the amplifier like we will often find today. However, Fender did make a standalone reverb unit during this time. This Fender uh, box of springs here, basically you plug your guitar into that, plug that into the front of the amp and suddenly it surfs up. This spring reverb is also a huge part of the surf rock sound. So in true demo man fashion, just to demonstrate how much this spring reverb really changes your tone and makes it just surfs up, I'm just gonna start with a dry signal, just play the guitar and the amp, and then I'll add the reverb so we could hear how this sounds. Obviously this super wet, splashy, pingy, just awesome sounding reverb. So the combination of this Fender Strat and the bridge position, plus this Fender amp and reverb, this is how Dick Dale got his tone on the song Miserlou. <laughs> It's almost impossible to hear those songs without that little ha ha in there. So this tone is super iconic. We still hear it today, you know, Quentin Tarantino films often make great use of this style of music. Or maybe you're familiar with a certain TV show whose theme song goes, uh... Not a Dick Dale song there, but obviously this tone is still super prevalent today, still very much a part of pop culture. Next, we're going to move on to our next example. We're going to talk about Mr. Jimmy Page and the sound he got in the early days of Led Zeppelin, specifically on the song Communication Breakdown. So I think for most guitar players, when we think of Jimmy Page, we probably picture that Cherry Burst Les Paul or that Double Neck SG plugged into a Marshall half stack. Well, for this studio take of this song, he actually plugged into a smaller Supro Combo amp and combine that with a Vox Tone Bender pedal, which is actually a fuzz pedal. Interesting to note though, he actually gets a pretty awesome distorted tone combining this amp plus a fuzz. So his tone sounded a bit like this on Communication Breakdown. <laughs> So 
Really awesome classic rock tone. If we take a look at this rig diagram here, you'll also notice that Vox Wah up front. He's actually using this during the solo of this song, and he's not using it in the traditional sweeping wah-wah sort of fashion. He's actually using it to shape his tone and just help him cut through the mix. So he's using it in what's called a cocked or fixed wah position. Basically, he's just leaving that expression pedal stationary. And if you actually check out live versions of this song, right before that solo, you'll hear him click on the wah, sweep to find that sweep point, and then, you know, it helps his guitar sing and just cut through the mix. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start with a little Jimmy Page style noodle, just the guitar and the amp tone. Then I'm gonna add in that wah so you can hear how that's gonna shape your sound and help you cut through a full band mix when it's time to solo. So here it is without the wah. Then what I could do is head over to my Pod Go, and I have it up on a table here just for demo purposes today, but I could go ahead and click on that wah, you'll see my light change there, and then maybe I could just kind of sweep till about uh, three quarters of the way down, whatever your sweep point is, and now we have this type of tone happening. Really cool way to use a wah pedal besides that traditional sort of sweeping sound and that's how Jimmy Page managed to get that tone for a solo on Communication Breakdown. So next we're going to talk about Mr. Ed King of Leonard Skinner and the sound he got on the song Sweet Home Alabama. So as the legend goes, Ed went down to the Muscle Shoals studio that day, he brought along his Fender Strat and he was planning to use the Fender Twin Reverb that was in-house at the studio there. However, unbeknownst to him, the tubes in this particular amp were dying out, they were on their last leg. So if you're not familiar with the Fender Twin, it's a very clean style amp, it has tons of headroom, you really have to crank it up until your windows are rattling before you get any sort of breakup from these types of amps. However, because the tubes were dying in this amp, it broke up a lot sooner than usual, and he also found that the feel was a bit looser. So a lot of times with our favorite tube amps, it's not only how they sound, but it's how they feel and react to how we're playing. So luckily I'm using modeling today. I'm able to go inside my Pod Go, pull up a Fender Twin style model, add some gain to it, even go into the deeper parameters like sag, ripple, and bias, and make it a bit looser feeling. And I could do this all while ear save volumes. So here's what Ed King did on the song Sweet Home Alabama, and this classic tone he got a little bit by chance. <laughs> Really awesome, just kind of broken up tone there. And once again, just one of those things that's a little bit pure luck. Went down to the studio that day and the amp was acting a little funny, but the results are pretty awesome. Next, we're gonna dive into our in-between positions. So on a traditional S-style guitar, you're gonna have often three single coil pickups and a five-way selector switch. That means in positions one, three, and five, we can access our straight up bridge, middle, and neck pickup and two and four will actually give us combinations of the bridge and middle, or middle and neck. And these give us some different sounds. They do reduce the noise and hum that you get with single coil pickups, but you do lose some brightness. Now that's not necessarily a con, that's just really just some more options for tonal variation. So in these kind of in-between positions, it's certainly not as bright. It's definitely a darker sound, can almost be described as more hollow when compared to the straight up single coil sound. So let's go ahead for John and check out some artists and how they use these tones. We're going to start with Mr. Mark Nolfer of Dire Straits and check out the tone he got on the song Sultans of Swing. So he's using his 1961 Fender Strat in the second position and in the studio take he plugs into a Fender Vibralux, very clean style amp. Also worth noting that Mark is a player who plays almost exclusively with his fingers so his attack and his tone is a little bit different than playing with a pick. But it sounds a bit like this. Really awesome clean tone happening there. 
you're taking a look at this tone template, you're also noticing that I have that double take on there. That's because if you listen to the studio take of this song, Mark actually plays some of his guitar parts over each other, meaning he's doubling them. This is just a nice studio type of effect to thicken it, add a stereo sort of sound to the mix. Luckily inside Podgo, there's a built-in double take effect that will let me mimic this style of studio magic. And it'll sound a bit like this. Really cool sound happening there. Next, we're gonna jump on over to Mr. Billy Gibbons of the band ZZ Top, talk a little bit about the guitar tone he got on the song LaGrange. So another player using a Fender Strat, this one from 1955. Once again, we're in that second position, and he's plugging into a Marshall Plexi style amp, with the matching cab there with the slush and greenback speakers. So, I'm not certain, but I imagine for the beginning of this song that he rolls back the volume knob on his guitar, brings it back up when the full band comes in, and rolling back on that volume knob is actually gonna let us clean up the amp. The level of amp modeling in Podgo is so detailed that I can actually get this realism from the amp. Just by cleaning up on my guitar, it's gonna clean up the amp. So he got a tone that sounded like this. Pretty cool, let's hear it now. <laughs> Really awesome tone. That combination of that darker second position plus this Marshall amp gives you this kind of really kind of gristly, nasty, in your face blues rock tone, which who can't appreciate that. Next, we're going to talk about an artist who uh, actually Billy Gibbons makes a little cameo in one of his videos. We're talking about a modern guitar hero here, Mr. Corey Wong, of course, of the Van Wolfpack, and also his own projects. So, Corey will use some different effects and different pedals now and then to shape his tone, maybe for a solo, but the core of his tone is almost always that Fender Strat in a fourth position there into a Fender Deluxe or maybe some sort of clean amp or clean plug-in. So, Corey is really well known for his just sort of hyper-funk, R&B, chopsy rhythm playing. He's an absolutely exceptional rhythm player and just guitarist overall. So check him out if you haven't heard him. But once again, the combination of this fourth position plus a clean amp, super popular combination for your funk, R&B, sort of pop, rhythm guitar tones. It's interesting to note, Corey actually uses the HX stomp on his pedal board a lot of the times. He's one of those guys who's always changing things in and out, experimenting, but he will use the HX stomp for some of his more kind of uh, esoteric sounds, maybe filters or delays and stuff. Luckily for us, just about every single effect in HX stomp is in pod go, so we can easily cover much of Corey's tone and anything he's going to go for. So I'm going to head up now to my fourth position pickup, and it's going to sound a bit like this. <laughs> Once again, really awesome sort of funk, rhythm, R&B type tone going on there. One of my favorites, super cool clean tone. Let's keep pressing on with some more examples now. We're going to finally jump up to our single coil neck position for these next few. And we're going to start by talking about Mr. John Frusciante of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. We're specifically looking at his Californication tour rig and the song Scar Tissue. So he's playing a pre-CBS Fender Strat here. Once again, we're on the neck position single coil there. And he's going into a Marshall Plexi style um, amp there with the matching cab. So really not gonna focus on his effects, really gonna dial into the core of his guitar tone. This is absolutely one of my favorite tones from this presentation, and I'm gonna tell you why. Just this tone is super touch sensitive. It kind of sits right on the edge of breakup 
Um, if you play really lightly, you're gonna get a really sweet singing, pleasing to the ear clean tone. And as you really start to dig in, you're gonna just get this awesome sort of breakup that has just really beautiful harmonic content to it. What can I say? It's just a really great tone, one of my favorites. So let's go ahead and hear this really quickly. This is the song Scar Tissue. Once again, this tone is just super tone sensitive and dynamic. These amp models in Podgo are very realistic, very responsive. The engineers at Line 6, when they build these models, they're going down to the component level and they're taking apart these amps, these effects, and they're looking at things like whether the wires have cloth or rubber shielding. Because all these combined together just create the larger picture of what this amp is, what this effect pedal is. So we really get this dynamicism, this awesome response. I'm gonna play this sound one more time and I'm really gonna make it apparent using my right hand how when we play light, awesome clean tone, digging in is really gonna give us a nice breakup sound. So here it is one more time. Really cool guitar tone there. I just love how that feels to play and the touch sensitivity of it. Let's keep forging on and talk about Mr. Nile Rogers and his Fender Strat, aptly named the Hitmaker. So Nile Rogers has played this guitar on countless chart toppers. We're talking pop, funk, R&B, and rock tunes all throughout the years. And like I mentioned with Corey Wong, who's kind of a player who lives on that fourth position for his rhythm tone, now goes one up and he kind of lives on that neck position there. So he gets a bit of a darker, kind of thicker, chunkier rhythm sound. So it's a really cool tone. Obviously he's been featured, you know, countless records as I've said. For his feature on Daft Punk's Get Lucky, we're not certain what he did to get that guitar tone, but we do know from a lot of interviews that what he likes to do is just plug his guitar straight into the mixing board maybe add a little EQ or compression in post to shape his tone, but oftentimes it's just that guitar straight into the board. We know from interviews sometimes he will blend a mic to amp signal to that, and we also know from interviews that in the past he's actually used Line 6's pod farm to get his tones, so that's just a cool tidbit of history there. So if we go over to my Podgo editor, I can actually show you how I set up this tone today. I'm using what's called the Studio Tube preamp model. This is basically gonna mimic me plugging into a high-end mixing board in a really nice preamp. So without further ado, this is the sound that now Rogers got on Daft Punk's Get Lucky. Oops, and before I do that, let me turn off that delay. That's something else I wanna show you next. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. One more time. Really cool rhythm tone happening there. Awesome, super clean style sound. So I accidentally clicked on that delay there before we started. There's one more sound I wanna show you in here and just a cool effect in Pod Go I also wanted to highlight. This is gonna be the dual delay model. What's cool about this, it actually gives you two different delay times in one single effect block. This is really great if you're just building maybe a more complex rig, need to get two delay times down and you could do it in one sort of effect. So let's go ahead and hear the type of sound uh, now Rogers got on David Bowie's Let's Dance. Really awesome rhythm stuff coming there from Mr. Nile Rogers. Let's go now to our final single coil example before we move over to some humbuckers. 
we're going to talk about Mr. Tom Morello and his days in Rage Against the Machine, specifically the song Killing in the Name of. So, he's using a Fender Telecaster, and much to my surprise, he's actually using that neck position pickup there. If you had asked me to guess or maybe take a bet, I probably would have said a bridge pickup and most likely a humbucker. So, as we talked about earlier, that neck position tends to be a little bit mellower, a bit darker in sound than the bridge pickup, which usually means a bit less aggressive, especially when you're pairing it with a gained out amp like this Marshall Model 2205. It's also cool to note that at this time he ran all of his effects in the effects loop of his amp, so between that preamp and power amp. We have all these effects here at our disposal in PodGo, but since I have it up on the table, I think it might be kind of silly if I try and manually show you like a Digitech whammy sound or something like that. So let's really just focus on his core guitar tone. Once again, the surprising combination of a single coil neck position with that Marshall amp. And before I dive in, let me just take a second to drop to drop D here. Thanks for your patience, folks. That made me uh, also realize it's a good time to tune up my whole guitar there. Things are a little humid out here in Illinois today. All right, without further ado, this is the guitar tone Tom Morello got on Killing in the Name of, the combination of that single coil neck pickup plus that Marshall amp. And it's gonna sound a bit like this. All right, you could just let that one ring for days if you wanted to. Really awesome, aggressive guitar tone. Once again, kind of a surprising combination there of that neck position plus that Marshall amp. So let's move right along. Let's dive now into our humbucking examples. So what is a humbucker? Well, it's a pickup that features this dual coil design. So you have two coils wound opposite of each other. That means you're gonna get a louder and darker sound than a single coil pickup. So pros of this design, it cancels some of that hum that's inherent to a single coil pickup. It cancels it out, hence the name humbucker. But you do lose some high end frequencies. So once again, maybe not a con, but just some different tonal options for you. Of course, a lot of humbuckers offer the option of splitting the coil so you can get those single coil type sounds. Like the guitar I'm using today has a humbucker in the bridge. I'm able to use the push pull pot in the tone knob to turn off a coil. That's how we were able to nail all those single coil examples earlier on in the presentation. So let's go ahead and take check out some humbucking um, examples, some players who used them, the different rigs they played through. We're gonna start with Mr. Jerry Cantrell of Alice in Chains, specifically looking at the Dirt Tour rig and the song Man in the Box. So if we take a look at the guitar there, it's a GNL Rampage with just that single humbucker in the bridge. And that plugged into his Bogner Fish Mossley 500 with the Marshall Cab is honestly the core of his tone. Of course, he's known for his masterful use of the Crybaby Wah. And on Man in the Box, it's actually one of the few times we get to hear him use an effect other than this Crybaby Wah. So on Man in the Box, he's actually using a voice box to double this vocal melody that comes in. And if you're not familiar with what a voice box is, you have this metal box on the floor. Out of that comes this plastic tube which goes into your mouth. It captures the vocal formants formed by your mouth cavity and that gets applied as a filter sound to your guitar. Pretty wild effect. Um, if you're not familiar with it, check out Frampton Comes Alive and you'll get the picture pretty quick. But he uses that type of sound down here. Let's just start with his overall rhythm tone. I just need to take a second here and come back up from drop D. So one second, folks. And it looks like maybe one or two more string slips, so I'm just gonna grab those real quickly because nobody wants to hear an out of tune guitar today. 
All right, we're back in business. So talking about the tone he gets here, once again, that humbucker plus this amp, really kind of aggressive in your face tone. And the actual composition of the riff actually lends to that sound a little bit. So it opens up with this sort of minor seventh interval. He's playing that low E string, or in his case, an E flat. He's actually tuned down a half step, but he's playing that low E flat plus a D flat. That's gonna give you this minor seventh interval, which is kind of more of a, a rub. It's not like a straight up power chord type of sound. But anyways, let's go ahead and hear it. Really aggressive type tone, sounds like this. As I mentioned, on this particular song, it's one of the few times we get to hear him use an effect outside that crybaby wah. So he's actually using the voice box on this. I could head over to my pod go, and we have a built-in voice box style effect where I can actually dial in the vocal formant, the vowel sound, do some rates and some different things. It's not gonna be a perfect emulation, but it's really gonna get me in the ballpark. So this is how that voice box might sound, covering that part. Once again, not exact, exactly the sound you're going to get, but really close to in the ballpark and pretty cool to have that sound at your disposal inside of Pod Go. Next, we're going to take a look at Adrian Smith from Iron Maiden, talk about the sound he got on his Peace of Mind tour, specifically the song The Trooper. So he's using a Gibson SG, humbucker in the bridge there, plugged into his Marshall Model 2204 with matching cab and Celestian 65 watt speakers. What's really common for these metal types of tones is to combine a high gain amp like that with an overdrive pedal, in this instance an Ibanez Tube Screamer. And the idea is to set that overdrive pedal with a higher output and lower gain. That means you're hitting that amp a little harder up front, which is gonna cause things to tighten up and also add a bit of, you know, distortion and gain to that sound. So I'm just gonna start by playing through this with that Ibanez Tube Screamer turned off. Then I'm gonna turn it on so we can hear how that's gonna tighten up our tone and just make things more better. So let's go ahead and hear this now. Now if I go ahead and hit on that Tube Screamer to tighten things up a bit. Don't worry folks, not charging for wrong notes today. But hopefully you can hear how that Ibanez Tube Screamer, not a huge change, but especially on our low end, things start to get tightened up, more defined, a little bit more aggressive in tone. If you're remembering this song correctly though, you know there's a second guitar player in here. What I can actually do is head into my pod go and turn on this twin harmony effect, which is really cool. I can set my key, I can set my scale, I can set my interval and even the mix. And all of a sudden it's like there's two guitar players. Maybe you can fool your band later into playing, paying you double. Good luck with that one, but it's gonna sound a little bit like this. This is really fun. <laughs> That's just a ton of fun to play with, that Twin Harmony effect there. Super cool effect inside the pot go. All right, this is gonna be our last tonal example. We're gonna talk about Jade Pujit of AFI, specifically the Sing the Sorrow tour rig and the tone he got on the song Miss Murder. So at the time, Jade is playing a Gibson Les Paul with a humbucker and the bridge there. Nowadays, Jade plays some custom Yamaha ref stars, often with just that single humbucker and the bridge. At the time, using a Mesa Dual Rectifier into a Marshall 4x12, and interesting to note, using a Line 6 Pod XT at this time for all the clean and affected tones. So obviously, Pod has come a long way with the Pod Go we're using today, and just up next, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit more just about the Pod Go. But let's hear this tone really quick, a bit more of a modern metal or hard rock style sound. <laughs>
all right there. That's a pretty cool tone in and of itself. And man, this humidity today, I'm sorry I could tell my guitar is starting to slip just a little bit out of tune again. Sorry about that, folks. Let's keep diving on now. I want to talk to you a little bit about Podgo. So we've covered quite a bit of guitar tone today, from surf rock to metal, and we talked a bit about pickups to do that. But we also covered quite a range of gear while we did this too. Effect pedals, amps, cabs, speakers, and even some microphone elements were technically at play. So how were we able to do that? Well, we used something called modeling. So modeling is a software recreation of an effect, amp, cab, or microphone. This allows for greater flexibility in performance, recording, or home use. Maybe you're performing in a cover band and you want to give that audience kind of that true to the record, authentic experience when they hear you play. Or maybe you're in your own band and you want to create tailor-made sounds for each song or just your own signature sound. So when people hear you, they say, hey, that's so-and-so. That's pretty cool. Obviously for recording, the same goes, having access to a library of Boutique, vintage, and highly sought after effects, amps, cabs, and microphones is super powerful in a studio setting, especially when you can get those tones up and running fast. And the same thing goes for home use. It's just a ton of fun to have access to these sounds, whether you want to try and mimic your favorite players and jam along with the records, or maybe you're just into building tones, you know? There's a ton of stuff you can do with modeling. So Line 6 offers some different modeling options. Today I was using the Podgo, which is a complete tone solution for standalone use. It has an onboard expression pedal, semi-fixed DSP path, which I'll explain a little bit as we go, and that's in a serial path there, meaning all your effects and amps are in just one chain, nothing breaking off. You have the option of running just a single amp cab or IR, and then it has assignable foot switches. So you can really show up to a gig with your guitar and a pod go, plug into the house PA, and that's all you would need. It's pretty awesome. As I said, complete tone solution for standalone use. Then we get to our HX Stomp, which is a compact size designed to fit right on your pedal board. It doesn't have any built-in expression pedals, but you can add up to two external ones. It has what we call dynamic DSP, so you're free to put whatever you want in that signal chain, whether you want to run six effects, or maybe two amps plus some effects, or two amps and two cabs. The choices are yours. You also have the option of parallel paths, so its routing can get a little bit more complex, a little bit more studio-esque than, let's say, Pod Go. You have the option, like I mentioned, multiple amps, cabs, and IRs, and these cool things called touch capacitive foot switches. You can touch those to assign effects and get into deeper menus. Finally, we have the big granddaddy Helix, five years old now, still adding new updates and awesome new features to this all the time. It's a complete tone solution for standalone use, has the onboard expression pedal, dynamic DSP with four signal paths, so you can easily run multiple amps, cabs, effects, crazy long signal chains with parallel routings and all sorts of fun stuff. Also has those touch capacitive foot switches I mentioned with the customizable scribble strips, those individual screens over each foot switch, really awesome on stage. And then finally it has extensive IO and control capability, two quarter inches, an XLR, a whole host of digital IO, and four sends and returns, meaning that Helix plays extremely well with any of your analog gear. So if you still want to keep around your tube amps or your favorite pedals or what have you, Helix pairs up with those excellently. So as I mentioned in Podgo, we have that semi-fixed DSP chain. Well, what does that mean? That means a few items are always present in your signal chain. That means you're always going to have a wah pedal, a volume pedal, EQ. You'll have a single amp, a single cab or impulse. And finally, an effects loop if you want to bring in any external gear. You can, of course, choose which amp and cab you want, choose your wah pedal and things like that. If you're not using any of these, you can, of course, turn them off and, as well, move them at any point in your signal chain. You also have four additional spaces to add whatever effect of your choosing. So some of these effects will appear as mono or stereo, so your pitch, dynamic, and distortion effects will always be mono in your signal chain. Loopers, you have the option of mono or stereo. And then filters, modulations, delay, and reverbs, you have the option, or excuse me, it'll be mono or stereo depending on its placement. So let's take a look at how this would work using uh, one more tone template, Mr. David Gilmore of Pink Floyd. He's got a whole host of effects there, chorus flanger, out to two digital delays, into a high watt amp and cab, out to this rotating speaker. So if we pull up our Podgo workflow and kind of fill in the blanks here, you could see how a more complex signal chain like this with multiple delay times and amps and rotary speakers can easily fit inside Pod Go, and we can nail this type of tone. Really cool stuff going on there. So 
How do we come up with these tones? Well, product specialists like myself have poured hours over articles, videos, magazines, getting these right. You could always head to line6.com slash tone dash templates, check out any of these rig diagrams for yourself and get building. Something I'm really excited to announce to y'all, Helix Skype lessons. Me and fellow product specialists like Tony Campanova or Nick Bell, maybe you've interacted with one of them today in the chat answering questions. We're all offering free half hour Helix Skype lessons. Head to that link right there. We'll hang out with you for a half hour, answer your questions on Helix, PodGo, PowerCab, or any of our HX products. We've had a ton of fun doing them. I wanna say we've done about 60 or 70 of these so far, and they've been super fun for me and the customers. If you're a Line 6 gear owner, this is a super great way to just get some more knowledge on your on your gear that you own, learn the way around it. Or maybe you don't own a piece of gear yet, but you want a one-on-one -on -one personal demo. It might be hard to get into a store right now. This is a perfect opportunity. So be sure to check out that link and you might have some lesson time with me. Who knows? Could be fun. So I'm super excited to announce our next performer. It's going to be Mr. Tony Campanovo. We have a ton of in-house talent at Line 6, and Tony is a fellow product specialist like myself. As I understand, he's going to be playing an original track for you, and he actually sent me one of his presets in advance that he's going to be using on this track. So he's using the Pod Go for this. He's going to be using some familiar stuff, obviously that Red Scree compressor, the Tima Overdrive. Using a Line 6 original amp here, which kind of emulates that sort of sought-after dumbbell style sound. Cab of his choosing, some EQ there, nice modern reverb, and interesting, at the end he actually has the LA Studio Comp. If this is leaving you scratching your head, one of the cool things about the modeling world is that you can break out of some of those more traditional analog rules. For instance, on a stage you really can't run a compressor and post after your sound like you would in the studio. However, with modeling you're able to do stuff like that, so Tony's using this to kind of gel together his preset and just give it a really nice glued together tone. So really excited. Be sure to put your hands together so Tony can hear you out there in Nashville, Tennessee. He's coming up next with an awesome PodGo performance. So for future events, you could always check out line6.com slash events. For social media, that's where you find us. I want to thank you all for attending. Stick around because we have some really awesome stuff coming up next. One of my favorite guitarists of all time, Mike Stern, is going to be on playing, talking, as well as John Patitucci, some great bass players like Daryl Jones, Ava Gardner, John Button of The Who. I can't wait. I'm going to be sticking around to check out it all. So once again, this has been Tone on the Go. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Yamaha Guitar Development Open House, and have a great day.